Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a video about arena fighting, a book about a researcher named Olga, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today, we have the one, the only, the amazing, Chris Reed! Caris is a best-selling author and the founder of Purpose Magazine. Hi! Well, I'm doing good, and today we're going to start off with the video of the week, and this is going to be a battle. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is ours. This game is made by Super Run 100. Because it is on Roblox, you are playing on PC, Mac, Xbox, and even your cell phone. And it is free. So to start off, I enter the game and I see a hologram of a grand piano and says play at the bottom. So you click it and then it gives you some options for modifiers. You can pay real money to access the better ones, but my dad won't let me use real money. So in the game, Badges, the first level is the easiest thing to achieve and said that it is a th- pathetically easy. So I get to the first level and you are in a big arena. You have to fight 10 people that spawn one at a time, but if you don't finish the one that you are fighting in time, you get another one anyway. So this makes the battle so much harder. If you cannot defeat the boss that comes at the second of the level, then you have to restart and don't get the badge. Which is really not cool. Well, I give hours 1 out of 10 stars because I can't defeat the first boss after many attempts and my dad said I might need to be older to play. And that makes me mad. Oh, wow. See, David Smith, law.com. You can call him at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help people. If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407-801-2667. That website again is cwsmithwall.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> <laughs> the Type U Show would like to thank one of our dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff. Ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom braille ADA signs, vinyl littering, to trophies and awards. They can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373. It's time for the book of the week! Oh, get in the smelly thing from nowhere. This book is written by Elise Gravel. Remember to the back of the book. In fact, Carice, would you like to do the honors? Sure, I would love to. When Olga crosses paths with a weird creature and becomes the first kid to discover the species Olga's ridiculous, she is at study. What does an Olga eat? How does it cook? Why does it burn here like the word rubber? With her trusty observation notebook and the help of a librarian, a shoekeeper, and some friends, Olga sets out to design and learn the facts about her smelling all the furry smell and searching for him to he goes missing. The scientific method is the best way to discover anything. Now, this is an era book and is worth one whole point. This is rated for third grade and eighth month. You can get this book at your school library. This is a great book about a grumpy old kid. We are always like this, by the way. So she finds a new animal species. Well, she will have to live her life with the new animal, which is crazy. So Olga over here loves animals. She is helpful to animals in their life. She actually studies animals. She studies their poop, fur, anything really. But she later comes across a new animal. She lives her life and meets new people. 
She makes observations about the animal. Then she finds the food that the animal likes. And then, uh-oh, where did Matt go? Well, you know you're gonna have to read the book, so yeah. Well, I give Oga 10 out of 10 stars because I really like that after they had gotten back and they had so much fun about living their life and doing research. Awesome. Over 40 years, Playhouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact Lighthouse Central Florida at 407-898-2483 or visit them online at Lighthouse. Midstate Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Midstate Fire today at 407 246 8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407 246 8855. And now it's time for the interview of an interesting person. Today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing, Karis Reed. Karis is a best-selling author and is the founder of The Purpose Magazine. Hi, guys. Thank you. This is super exciting to be here. Okay. So, I have to ask, you are an author, CEO of a major firm, founder of a club, run a podcast, and now founded a magazine. Which do you like doing the best? Oh, wow. I I would like to say being the founder of the firm, helping women discover new ideas about themselves. Wow. it's really cool. So, what got you interested in being an author? You know, I started being an author in 2017, and I just wanted to start sharing my story and so that I can help other people, Wow, men and women. Wow. So, how do you get ready to sit and write about something? Um, basically, a lot of times I take a little notebook around with me everywhere I go. Like, I have one in the car, I have one in my purse. And so, when things come to mind, I jot them down and take notes. And then when I have my self-meditation days, I'll put it all on paper, and sometimes it just turns into a book. (laughs) Okay. So what is the best part about being an author? I think bringing people change their lives through what I've written. Like, if if I help someone overcome an obstacle or help someone get through a struggle because because I went through it, that's the best part. Okay. Okay. So you have been on ABC, NBC... CBS, Fox, well, pretty much all of the lighter stations. Well, was it fun to do the interviews? It was, and actually, there were there were actually of most of the literature interviews where I've, I've I've written, you know, about me and my company, and you know, submitted to submitted it to the stations, and they we put the interviews online. But they were also fun as well. Yes. Well, that's really cool. Well, were you nervous at all during the interview? I really was because sometimes when you put things down on paper, your thoughts, it, it makes sense to you, but it may not make sense to other people when they read them. So you have to be really careful for me, you know, to make sure I over I overread stuff and that it makes sense mm. when they read it. I can tell your fear. <laughs> I can tell. So what is the coolest interview that you got to do? Are you kidding me? This one. Of course. It's not serious, yo. <laughs> okay. Well, what is the hardest part about being on an author? You know, the hardest part is, you know, just sometimes having that that nervousness that what you write is going to make sense, that if it, it will change anyone's life. You know, you still have those negative thoughts that go through your mind, you know, before you put everything out on paper. So, yeah, just kind of get it all out of your head and just going for it. Okay. So now you do lots of stuff, as I said. What is the most rewarding part about your job? Oh, wow. The most rewarding part is to, you know, having those testimonies from women. You know, a, a, a part of my life, I've been through abuse before. And so when I share my story about going through abuse, just having those women say, you know what? 
because I've read your book or because I've read your story, now I know I can get out of this situation. So the most rewarding part is seeing someone's life change. Okay. So what is the craziest thing that has happened while you were at work? Craziest thing that ever happened. Oh, falling down. You know, sometimes I'm a little clumsy and, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's what? slipping over my own foot. It's just crazy sometimes. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I can be a ghoul. <laughs> wow. That's really cool. Well, how did you fall down? Well, sometimes I just... Like, there's nothing in the way. You know, just one of those moments I have. I don't know if I walk too fast or I just, I'm just in a hurry all the time. But yeah, it, it happens. Trips and falls. But I just get up and start over again. Wow. <laughs> that must be really funny when that happened. It does. I have to laugh at myself sometimes. Whoa. I didn't make sure no one's too far. Okay. So you run the Destiny Walkers Network. Can you tell me more about that? Definitely. Destiny Walkers Network was founded last year, 2019, and it was actually a rebrand. I am a certified life coach, and I am a Destiny consultant. So at one point in my life, I didn't know what I was going to do because, you know, everything changed for me. I lost everything, my job, money, home, everything, and all kind of stuff. And so Destiny Walkers Network was founded because I found myself in a dark hole, not knowing what to do next. And so I figured that if I can pull myself out and rediscover a new purpose in me, then I can help women do the same thing for them. Okay. So what is your greatest achievement in life? My greatest achievement is, oh my gosh, just being resilient. You know, you know, I'm 41 years young, and so many things in life have, have transpired. I just have lost home, job, everything that I've had before. And just having that ability to come back, bounce back, and start all over again. And then not hold a grudge or be mad or be negative about it. So my greatest achievement is being able to start over and do it with follow my team. Wow. Okay. So I saw in your bio that you also have started your own magazine. I have a copy right here. So what could you start or interested in making your own magazine? I was interested. <laughs> Thank you. I was interested because, I mean, it just it, it was it was an idea. I mean, again, I'll tell people all the time, if you have no idea, it's a bad idea. If you have an idea, write it down, you know, do your research and make it happen. And so I just had the idea that, you know, it could be another way to help women discover their purpose, to empower them to be who they were created to be. And so I figured that Purpose Magazine, if I feature women who are doing things, you know, to impact the world, then they can help those other women or the twin person who's, who's still looking and searching for things to do, and they can be inspired by that. Okay. So, was it hard to figure out what you wanted your magazine to be about? No, it, it wasn't hard at all, because the Destiny Walkers Network being the major brand, and that vision is to help empower women to discover their purpose. I wanted a magazine called purpose like to get the main point out of there so when women see that name or men see that name it's going to give them the idea huh, okay purpose magazine is it has to be things in there that's going to get me excited or give me give me information on what to do in life or give me information to empower me and encourage me so it wasn't hard at all i i love to provide opportunities for women to do articles or small businesses to do ads about their products and services again so that we can empower those who are looking to start something in their life. Okay. So what advice should give our listeners if they wanted to grow up and make their own magazine? Oh, definitely. Write it down. But come up with the title of your magazine. No matter how small or big it sounds, write it down. See yourself already holding that magazine in your hand. Do the research if you want to do an editorial magazine, you know, a journal-type magazine, you know, a... a, a shopping magazine, just write everything you want to do down and on paper, research it, and then go for it. You also can go to a very popular app called Canva.com, and Canva.com gives you practicing templates where you can actually, you know, pre-select how you want to do a, a future magazine, and you can start from there. Okay. So, I thought they have a podcast. Can you tell me about that? Yes. That's new. Excuse me, Women of Destiny podcast was inspired by my book, Being One of Destiny. 
seven key principles, how to walk in purpose. And so I wanted to leave some weekly empowerment for women after they read the book of just kind of to continue that encouraging and that empowerment for them to, to strive through their lives and continue to discover their purpose. So Real Investing Podcast is a weekly inspiration, self-development, self-help podcast for women. Okay, that's really cool. Who has been your most interesting guest? Oh, actually, for the podcast, I haven't invited a guest yet. <gasps> I normally just come up with a topic, and then I, I, I pre-record my podcast, and then I share it through Anchor, Spreaker, you know, the Breezer, and Spotify that away. But I haven't had a chance to interview an actual guest yet. Ooh, Wow. So if you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? Wow, if I could go back 10 years, whoa, I would definitely do a lot of things in business over. I would, you know, wouldn't be so quick to jump the gun. You know, I have to admit that I used to be a person that made decisions off of my emotions. I was, you know, always excited about jumping into new business adventures. And of course, you learn from your mistakes, but I would tell myself 10 years ago, 10 years back, just take your time and take things one day at a time. Don't jump into any new business ventures or ideas just yet. Okay, so when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Did you always know that you were going to be an author? I did not. When I was a kid, I actually wanted to be a model. Um, and, and a lawyer. I wanted to be two things. I wanted to be a lawyer and I wanted to be a supermodel. <laughs> and uh, I never pursued either one, but I never thought I would be an author. Wow. If you could do any other job that you are not already doing, what would it be? Okay. It would definitely be hmm, a singer. Even though I can't sing, but I love hearing beautiful voices. I love music. And I just think people with, who can sing and, and play instruments or have a wonderful talent. So I would definitely be a singer or a musician. Okay. So what was the biggest mistake you ever made, and how did it change you as a person? <laughs> the biggest mistake I ever made in... <clears throat> how did it change me forever? Well... Not listening to that still small voice and jumping into a marriage that was not um, divinely for me. Um, not, you know, I love marriage. I love, you know, family. And, but um, just not giving myself that time to get to know a person. And, um, yeah, if I was doing it all over again, I would just take my time and, and just get to know someone better. Okay. So when you're not working with content creation, what do you do for fun? To do for, for fun, I'm more of a nature person. I love to go for walks. I love to go to the lake and just look out and, and just look at the sky, listen to the birds. You know, I'm, I'm very nature, so I just love to go out and meditate. It, it, it allows me to think. It allows me to reset my mind and just kind of, you know, shake things off and start all over again. So, yeah, I love nature. Okay. Well, do you play video games, and what is your favorite one? Video? Oh, Pac-Man. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Good one. Pac-Man and Sinner Speed. Those were my two number Which one, one favorites. No, um, oh, my God. You're going to challenge me. Uh, oh, well, I'm going to think of Pac-Man. I'm just, I can't remember the other one, but oh. Pac-Man... I'm sorry, you know, I just can't, but I kind of didn't keep up with the latest, latest, but I had two sons, and they always kept me up the part, but, you know, Mom, I kind of threw away, but yeah. Pac-Man is my favorite. Okay, so what is your favorite book to read? I love a lot of self-development and personal growth books. Rich Dad, uh, Poor Dad, you know, um... Uh, the name Napoleon Hill, you know, all those, you know, books that just get you to thinking about entrepreneurship and believing in yourself and speaking things into existence, um, you know, just making you a better person. So a lot of self-development and self-help books. Okay. Okay. 
Now, can you tell me that one story? You know, remember, this is a kid's show. But the one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Come on, you can tell me. <laughs> well, I got lost at a beach when I was five. Um, it was really, really scary. I just remember being at the, driving up to the beach with my family. My sister, my brother, my mom, and my uncle. And this was in California when we were when we were little. And that is like the last thing I remember. Next thing you know, I was in the middle of the beach by myself, and all I saw was a lot of water. And out of nowhere, like maybe five minutes later, they appeared. I just saw myself just standing still in the middle of what looked like a forever, never ending water and sand. And so I was so embarrassed. Wow. I was so scared. And I remember crying, and then just they, they appear. I, I just don't, I really don't know how this that happened, but yeah, I mean, if they hadn't found me, I just, I don't know where I would be right now. So, yeah, wow. I don't, I don't like telling the story because it's kind of embarrassing and I don't know how it happened, but it happened. <laughs> wow. Do you still yes. like the beach? I do. I do. Um, it didn't terrify me to the point to where I don't like water. It just, I'm just very more cautious now. I, I, I take, you know, very cautious when I go, you know, around water, near water. I always take my cell phone, I always take someone with me, I always let someone know where I'm going. So, yeah, I do like beaches and I do like water. Okay. Well, is there anything I should think my listeners should know about you? Um, definitely. They can connect with me. Um, you know, I'm very cool and... Uh, I like to give out, you know, lots of free information. I, I give out um, free classes once a month on how to write, you know, your book um, from start to finish. Uh, we'll be starting that back up probably at the top of the year. So, yeah, they can just, um, if they want to write a book or, you know, get something started, they can, you know, they can hit me up. I'm very fun, down-to-earth person. Okay. Well, do you have a website or Facebook for my listeners that want to follow you? Definitely. My Facebook is Karis L. Reed, and my Instagram is Karis L. Reed. And they can follow me on either one of those platforms. And I'm also an, an empowerment speaker, so they can go to www.karislreedempowered.com. Okay. So what's that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? Oh, wow. I think you went from A to Z, my buddy. Oh! Um, Oh, you forgot to ask me what my favorite color was. Well, what is your favorite <laughs> color? My favorite color is pink. Mine it too! Is. <laughs> well, it goes yeah. a little bit into more red. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, thank you, Kyrus, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Definitely, I sure can. Okay. The Tribia Show would like to thank Boggy Creek Air Boat Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an air boat and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant and even got some gator rights. If you want to have a blast with the entire family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now to get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. Oak Ridge Gun Range is a family-oriented shooting range that has been in business for over 30 years. They specialize in basic firearm training and offer numerous services such as consignments, gun trades, gunsmithing, and concealed weapon classes. I even got my training for gun safety at Oak Ridge Gun Range. Great customer service and firearm safety is what they do best. So find out more at OakRidgeGunRange.com. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! you curious for helping me with math corners today we're going to talk about division division is used to find the number of equal size sets or equal number in each set this can be very helpful in being fair with fairness everything is equal so if you have 24 cookies and six friends you may have a problem if one person needs too many of them 
So, how do you know that each friend gets equal amount? But, if you use division, you can tell everyone to get the correct number of cookies, so it is fair for all of your friends. Now, there are a few ways to figure this out. First, you can move all the six friends in a row and hand each friend one cookie each. And when you get to the end, you get back to the first person and keep going. But, what if there was not an even number of cookies? Or, what if someone eats one while you're passing them out? Let's to use division and determine what 24 divided by 6 is. In this case, 6 goes into 24 four times. Because 4 times 6 is 24. So it is even. And we can give each friend 4 cookies. So curious, do you now know all about basic division? I do. Well, do you use it at all at your work? And in, yes, I do. Um, one of my part-time activities is picking different parts. In a warehouse, so I doesn't have to always add and divide. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, Karis, for your help with Math Corners. You're a very welcome. My pleasure. And now it's time for a Heart of a Lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by a heart of a lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. So this week, we're going to talk about nobility. For me, I think nobility is remembering we are God's special possessions and acting in a noble way, showing courage and honor. The qualities of nobility are goodness, virtue, honor, generosity, and selflessness. So this week, well, I kind of messed up on nobility. So my mom took me and my dad to breakfast, and we had some pretty good sandwiches. And when we were done, my dad and I were joking around of how she did it because because we thought that she was going to scam us to go shopping or doing haircuts. She was upset because we wanted to go home and play video games. She wanted to take us shopping to get snacks for the house. We did not act in a noble way, and my dad and I are going to work on being selfless and not complain when we have to go shopping. We apologize, and we'll try to do better next week. So, Karis, did you see or use nobility at all this week? I did. I really did. And that was actually, you know, showing generosity speaking and helping out the next person in the store, you know, when I see someone who doesn't have enough money at the cash register, or even I was at a stoplight, I had just came from purchasing some fast food, and I saw a young kid and his mom at the stoplight, and I just, I gave them my food, you know what I mean, you know, because I had food at home, I just chose to eat out fast food, so I really didn't have to ask, so I showed generosity this week, and I love it. Wow. Well, of all of the Heart of a Lion virtues, which is your favorite? Hmm. I would say that, well, there's a lot of them. Integrity and obedience. Well, why? If I can do two, but you said which one. So, um, leadership would have to go, uh, you know, first. <laughs> okay. Well, we should always try and be lion strong in everything we do. That's we? right. That's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the amazing Chris Ree for being on my show. It's been so much fun talking with you today. I hope one day to get to be featured in your magazine. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Tiberius. This was an awesome, fantastic show. You are a wonderful host, and I enjoy every single minute of it. And, of course, I would love to feature you for our December or our January issues, so we're definitely going to keep in touch. I would love to be in the January version. Awesome! You got it! Because actually my birthday is in January. Cool! Mine is too! Hey! Yay! Cool! (laughs) And be sure to listen to us next week on the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius! The Tiberius Show is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. Executive producer, Joseph Boyd. Production editor, Pierre Laguerre. Green Room manager, Danny Boy. And your program host, Tiberius Boy. The 
Tiberius Show is copyright 2018.